Good evening, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 3rd, 2020, recorded on 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. This is going to be taking a look at all the tropics for this afternoon and, of course, evening. Out here across the Atlantic Basin, we have several systems to talk about. First of all, the remnants here of Tropical Depression Nana and Tropical Depression Omar, respectively. Nana is still bringing some impacts towards, uh, obviously, Belize and the northern coast of Guatemala, uh, or I'm sorry, the northern coast of Honduras, and also for the uh, Guatemala area. However, of course, this will be moving out into the eastern Pacific Basin, where this will have some chance of reformation over the next several days or so in the eastern Pacific Basin right now, only a low probability of that happening. Out here across the west, of the rest of the Atlantic Basin, we have this little area of disturbed weather towards the northeast of Omar. Unlikely to get much of an organization and a certainly, you know, a name, uh, but it is something we're going to have to watch. But again, this is just generally all, you know, entangled within a frontal system and no real concerns other than for some marine interest. Now, the big concerns that we have here retrospectively are dealing with our multiple systems out here in the East Atlantic Basin. First of all, we have 91L, soon to be 92L, and soon to be 93L. So we have retrospectively three uh, tropical uh, disturbances that are likely to go on to be tropical cyclones within the next several days. And a lot of differences in the models kind of defer today. First of all, a look here at Invest Area 91L. Again, a pretty disorganized mess this evening, uh, mostly due to easterly shear that is being impinged on our system right now. Again, this is easterly shear coming uh, mainly from Africa and the associated uh, African easterly jet. Um, and the slower trade winds, uh, along with a multitude of other, other factors kind of contributing to the shear. So we have our low-level kind of vortex, basically, or mid-level vortex and mid-level spin associated in through here. And then we have a low, basically a low area of showers and thunderstorms out here towards the north and also some off towards, finally, the north and east. And you can see that we're starting to see maybe the signs of some organization with 91L. Again, right now it's dealing and battling with some pretty strong shear across the region. So that's going to be really hindering any significant organization throughout at least the next several days. But this does have and take on a little bit more of a banding structure this evening. Now this could be aided uh, certainly by the diurnal maximum uh, upcoming across the region, basically the maximum period of convection, which is maximized throughout a certain time. And again, you know, then kind of the, the opposite for a diurnal minimum, basically a period of, of minimum convection or the period of least convection at an associated time frame. So this is trying to use up and, and kind of gain some instability here, what we call a uh, convective instability of the second, second kind or CISC, basically, uh, just some fancy meteorological terms. But generally, 91L still remains generally disorganized this morning or this evening and should stay that way at least for the next several days. Now, 91L, again, it, its track guidance is kind of all over the place and a lot of the models are just not very enthusiastic about it at all. In fact, again, most of the models is kind of hang the circulation here over generally this area at least for the next couple of days. And it's really not going to be moving all that much. Again, you know, you might see some pretty erratic movement, but by and large, it's actually what's actually going to occur. The second wave behind it, 92L, is eventually going to move toward the, towards the north of our system here of 91L. And that's when we could see some binary interactions occur between 91 and 92L. Um, and you know, this is going to complicate the forecast even further because there is the possibility that 91L doesn't even develop and just kind of merges into a bigger system with 92L. And of course, that kind of complicates things further. But generally, and by and large, there does seem to be a pretty good handle that at least for right now, we could have three tropical cyclones that end up developing by the end of next week. 
and that certainly seems to be the chances of that are increasing and beyond these three waves we have an additional couple of waves coming off of Africa which seems to suggest that we're going to have a pretty active time kind of continuing in. Now one of the things here on the 18Z guidance models uh, this afternoon or this afternoon this is the 2 p.m. guidance um, most of them now, other than and besides the AEIN uh, and the AEMI, basically two versions of the GFS model, uh, those don't bring it to tropical storm intensity, but the ship's model, the multi-model consensus, the IVCN, LGEM, UK Met, and CMCI, which is the CMC Canadian model, all bring this to a tropical storm status by the time we get into at least the next 48 hours and beyond. Now, uh, fortunately, I think this is going to take a little bit longer to become a tropical storm, given the fact that this is relatively still disorganized, and that would be about two days from now. And again, most of the modeling, even the, the LGEM model, suggests that this is going to have a pretty hard time and only intensifies into a tropical storm at about day five, and then obviously out to day nine. Um, but by and large, most of the models today are suggesting that this is going to struggle a little bit in terms of gaining any significant organization as time kind of progresses. So mainly what we kind of came here to talk about, we came here to talk about the models this evening, so we're going to kind of go ahead and waste no time getting into it. This is the GFS 850 millibar of uh, relative vorticity. This is the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And for reference, your higher cyclonic spin is in your darker red colors here. That's actually the remnant circulation of Omar. It's still a tropical cyclone, believe it or not. Uh, this is soon to be Invest Area 92L, and this is 91L down here. So you can see it's kind of embedded within the intertropical convergence zone right now. So none of these systems have actually broken off. But uh, right now, this is kind of all embedded within the ITCZ intertropical convergence zone, basically the monsoon gyre trough. And that's going to continue. You can kind of see what actually happens is almost like a quote-unquote Fujiwari effect where you have 91L down here that tries to get better organized uh, at least throughout the next couple of days. And then 92L kind of remains disorganized and disheveled up there. But you notice how there's kind of this binary interaction that 91L actually moves eastward and almost northeastward and 92L moves off towards the west out here. So you're kind of getting this broad turning, almost like a quote-unquote Fujiwari effect. And you can kind of see how that generally is expected to kind of continue uh, at least throughout the next couple of days. We see how that generally kind of continues and we end up kind of getting the 91L to kind of just sit down here and propagate very slowly. And it has a lot of time in this warm water to actually develop into a tropical cyclone. And then you have another wave coming off. This is the one highlighted, the medium chance highlighted back here. And then of course this would be 92L, still remains pretty disorganized at this point in the model field. Eventually all of them try to consolidate into a tropical cyclone. You've got this big ridge of high pressure that's being degraded though. And we can see that here in the model field at 500 millibars at 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. And what we're looking at here, are these darker reds, that's your higher strength of the ridge. This is basically a stronger ridge equals further west movement. And also then you have your weakness in the ridge up in here at the northern latitudes, which would promote, you know, troughiness, you know, carrying storms north, etc. So as we kind of progress throughout time, you at least see throughout the next 48 hours, what kind of remains the general idea we have a pretty stout ridge in place at least through the next about three to four days. We have a pretty stout ridge that remains in place, but then at about 120 hours, this is five days out from there, we start to see a pretty significant change in the overall pattern. As the typhoons right now over in the western Pacific begin to recurve, uh, what we end up getting is a an impact in the high latitude uh, in, in the jet stream pattern in and in, in across North America. 
So you can see a general area of troughiness kind of out here, another you know area of deep low pressure out here associated with the easternlies out here, uh, high altitude kind of jet pattern in through here. So right now, <clears throat> you don't really have much of a, a high amplitude blocking pattern over here. You have just enough that, it, that these weaker storms are going to go further westward, uh, but they aren't going to significantly move uh, due west. You're not going to have this ridge just pumping these storms west one after another. So if these do become stronger, there is a distinct possibility they do gain enough latitude that they eventually will kind of recurve out like something like this and this will not be a problem although there's some discrepancies and there also is the possibility that beyond five days from now we start to talk about a trough that is non-existent and a ridge that is stronger and higher amplitudes out here across north america and the and the canadian maritimes we now we start to see how that pattern eventually kind of evolves that we do get much more of a blocking pattern that sets up this is by september 11th and again you can kind of see how that blocking pattern tries to evolve but today on the recent gfs runs it has moved this trough a little bit closer and it is speeding up the time of this trough and this does have implications and we can see that this trough eventually kind of gets caught up and whatever and whatever systems kind of come out of this and this is looking longer range but they seem to want to go and recurve you just don't have a very high amplitude blocking pattern setting up to the north that ridge is moving on out to the east with these easternlies kind of driving this ridge uh, towards the east and you have persistent troughing over the Midwestern United States, which eventually is going to pick up these storms and carry them off towards the north and east and away from land. So that's kind of good news, but there's also a lot of considerable uncertainty towards how that all plays out. And you can see how the evolution has been on the models uh, that even from 060 this morning, we had at least a little bit more of a, a blocking pattern and not a lot of troughiness. But generally, today, the trend has been closer to that area of troughs. But, and you know, for reference here, this is the European 850 millibar vorticity. And we'll kind of run this out. And again, you, you can see generally that the pattern seems to favor on both models that the ridge is going to be pumped further out to the east. And that kind of allows this wave train to kind of get going and pulled on out towards the north and east. But you notice how even at hour 240, we have more waves kind of coming off here that do kind of get further west. And the reason for that, and if we look here at the 500 millibar analysis, is we can just see how this ridge evolves. This is day five. This ridge obviously is now getting broken down. Your high latitude uh, amplifying pattern is occurring across North America. These jet streams are amplified and you're getting a little bit more of troughiness and you can see this next big trough over the western United States at day five. So if this verifies, then there's also some validity in the model field. But again, you know, it's taken for grain of salt right now. But we can see here that, you know, at, at the very end of the forecast pattern, we have a trough here over, you know, basically north and east of the Canadian Maritimes. We have a big ridge out to the east, kind of out like that. We have another ridge out towards the west. There's your alleyway out to sea right there. But where do you wait? Not so fast because, again, that's not necessarily a 100% guaranteed that as we progress throughout time, that that's something that's going to happen, that it's not necessarily a guarantee um, that that is going to happen or not. So again, a lot kind of remains to be seen on just kind of exactly what happens. And you can see that, you know, we've trended today uh, towards, you know, that's September 1st, and we've trended from yesterday to today for a storm to be somewhere further south and uh, west in this model, in this particular model run. But again, that is, you know, far out in time. This is, you know, September 11th, you know, well beyond five days from now. So take it with a grain of salt. Now, for what this is worth, this is the GFS Parallel. This is the newest version of the GFS. And we can move this out here to five days from now. 
Again, we are watching mainly right now two systems out here that seem to want to develop. All the models are picking up on it. And then you can also start to see that the pattern overall, once again, favors more of an out to sea track. Again, your, your ridge is a little bit further off towards the west and further north, but by and large, you have a very persistent area of ridging with another persistent area of troughiness. You can very well see that depicted here in the model that we have a pretty good trough through here. Your trough axis is running something like that. Moving out into the open Atlantic, and then this will kind of pick up any storms and turn it on out to sea. But once again, we just really have to wait and see because there's the possibility that what we could end up getting is a more stout ridge that kind of builds over top of the storms right now that forces it further westward. And there's also the possibility that if these storms do not become strong enough, the associated energy with them is not going to be pulled further north because obviously a tropical cyclone the stronger a tropical storm or hurricane is, the further north it's going to be pulled. It's basically called poleward evection. And that poleward evection is very crucial because if these storms are stronger, it's going to get further off towards the north before it you know, really goes any further west. We've seen strong storms like Irma before, you know, kind of take a west-southwest dive as a Category 3 hurricane at that point, uh, but we did have a pretty significant ridge of high pressure towards the north. Right now, that doesn't seem to be the case. We seem to have this persistent troughiness being picked up on all of the models, suggesting this goes whoomp out to sea. But again, there's a lot of discrepancy because, or there, there's a lot of uncertainty because the typhoons over the Western Pacific right now are known to cause a very significant troubling time in the models. They cannot resolve things adequately. And since they cannot resolve things adequately, in the model fields, this really, really hinders the model guidance's performance uh, beyond days, you know, five, six, seven, and eight. You know, let alone those time frames are in the gray area all along. But what we're trying to show here is the overall pattern, at least right now, seems to favor an out to sea track. But you can't, you know, you, you can't kind of hold it there and say that's exactly what's going to happen. And vice versa, you can't say this is going to hit land. So there's a lot of considerable uncertainty, but the models are trying to see something developing, uh, you know, within the next couple of days, probably by next week. And then, you know, we'll just kind of have to see what goes on from there. But there is always the potential that someone is going to have to watch. And, and it doesn't hurt that if you live in a hurricane prone area that you, you know, should be monitoring things anyway, as it's the peak of the season. And we're likely to continue this very active period all the way up into the first two weeks of November. So certainly something to be monitoring. Now, real quickly here, this is the actual observed uh, relative vorticity product. This is uh, a couple of hours old at this point. It's not updated. I don't think it hasn't updated. Yeah, it hasn't updated. Um, but by and large, again, you can see a couple of things here. First of all, we have a tropical wave approaching the Lesser Antilles right now. Not really expecting any significant development, but of course, it is that time of the year where we do have to watch. That's Invest Area 91L. This is soon to be 92L down here. So we have a pretty big area of vorticity down here. Again, nothing trying to bundle at the moment. Uh, this is our little wave of energy out here that we're going to have to watch. But again, no threats to land. That's the remnants of Omar. And this is the remnants of now Tropical Depression Nana. So... Again, we do have a lot to watch, but by and large, at least for right now, there's no significant land concern to the United States or the Lesser Antilles uh, at this time. Of course, we'll be continuing to monitor things, and as always, I will have another video discussion out by tomorrow morning. So if you guys uh, do want to uh, you know, watch that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and, and enable notifications to be notified every time I do upload a video. All right. Well, that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening and uh, early morning tomorrow. And I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys some more tomorrow morning. Stay safe, everyone. I'll talk to you guys some more tomorrow.